Alleluia. Alleluia. Barakata Yahweh Malakawalam. We come together, Abba Yah, on this set apart day, your Shabbat day, that you ordained, Abba Yah, that you blessed, and you ordered us, Abba Yah, to keep it, to cherish it, to love it, Abba Yah, to protect it. And so as we come together, Abba Yah, in obedience, in this segment, Abba Yah, to return back to the language and the culture that you blessed us with, that set us apart from all the other nations, Abba Yah. We just ask, Abba Yah, that you inspire more Samak and all that edify your word, Abba Yah, that we may gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of who we are, Abba Yah, and whose we are, and the purpose that you set us apart, Abba Yah. All these generations that we've been disconnected, Abba Yah, we're trying to return with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might. And we endeavor, Abba Yah, to embrace this culture. We just ask that you bless us, Abba Yah, with understanding. And Abba Yah, as we see the wickedness of this world, where good is seen as evil and evil is seen as good, Abba Yah, we take heed and we understand, Abba Yah, that you put us in this position, Abba Yah, that we can understand the error of our ways and that we, Abba Yah, will endeavor, will be zealous to get out of this situation, Abba Yah. And so that's why we come to you, Abba Yah, as you ordered that you might find us acceptable. Please forgive our forefathers, Abba Yah, for their transgressions. And as you bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and we recognize the error of our ways and turn back to you, Abba Yah, that you forgive us and you blot our transgressions out of your memory. And please, Abba Yah, be merciful when you judge us for our transgressions. Please continue to weak at our ignorance, but open our eyes, Abba Yah, that we may be wise. Blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh, and blessed is he that comes in your name. Hallelujah. Toda Reba Abba. Aman wa aman. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Told us I came. Told us. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Mishpaka. We'll be getting ready with just some of our culture portion, uh, just going into uh, dealing with the language so we can practice our Hebrew reading um, and also just identifying what's actually written in the word. And since we are focusing on the season of Pesach and Passover, and we know that when they came out of Mitzrayim and they came to the mountain the third month, one of the things that the most ideal was given to them the commandments. So we'll be focusing on the commandments today. Isha, can you tell me how to move this bar down? Because it always is in my way. I can't see my screen. Can you show me how to move this bar? Y'all bear with me one moment. No, I'm not on camera yet. How do I move this bar out of the way? This one, with all that stuff on it. How do I move that? Hmm. Oh, is that it? Yeah. It always brings me back up. Just the way you can hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm gonna try to do it. I'm just try to do it without. Um, I need to move that bar. Just it's in that way. Mm-hmm. 
Is she home? More like. Don't worry about it. Notebook. Uh, uh, for those who are really trying to get into the language and learning more about the language and building your vocabulary, you have your notebooks out as well. Uh, not only are we going to read today, but we're actually going to get some vocabulary words um, so we can parse some of these verses out. So who's the first Hebrew reader volunteer that we have that would like to try to read? No hands yet, Maury. No Might have yet? to pick someone. <laughs> All right. Was well, I can you want to start us off? Okay, I'm Maury. Is that where you got highlighted? That's where you want to start? Yes. Okay. Why the bear Elohim eight call ha Deborim ha ale la more. Okay. So uh, what we're doing now, Mr. Bacall, just uh, in this portion, where we talk about the cultural portion, one of the things that we know um, that's written in the uh, Decalogue of Sirach is the things that are spoken in the Hebrew language um, has a stronger vibration, and we should be laboring to try to at least know what was written in the original text. There is This is what we're reading now is what's considered the Assyrian script. This is what most of your Torahs will be written in, but the Paleo script is the one that you will see that Moses and um, our forefathers actually wrote in. Uh, uh, the, when the uh, commandments were written, they weren't written in this script. They were written in the Paleo script. But this is what's considered the Assyrian, uh, the Assyrian script, uh, or what most people would consider the modern or the um, biblical script is what they call it, a uh, biblical Hebrew. So one of the things that when we're reading it um, and we're parsing words out, we're reading first of all to try to understand what the letters are. So we had to first study the, uh, the alphabet. Uh, then we also had to study the vowel points. The vowel points are these Nikul symbols that are up under letters. But what I have up today, I just kind of want to show you the reason why when we're trying to read in the Hebrew and the reason why we may pause sometimes or get a little stumbled up is because whereas in English, you will see every word separate. So if I say, and Yah said unto Moses, of Yah spake unto Moses, each one of those is a separate word. Whereas in Hebrew, it's still somewhat of a separate word, but certain letters um, are used uh, as prefix and suffix, which actually is added to a root word, which gives the understanding of, and he said, or he spake, or he spoke. So here, if you can look down to, I can't see the bottom of my screen, but if you look down to the bottom of my screen, you will see that this first letter here, um, Zakane, can you read what, the, uh, what it says down at the very bottom of the screen for me? Because I just want to make sure y'all can see it. Um, I'm not sure you uh, what you're talking about, Moray. You're talking about, um, I see down at the bottom of the screen, Exodus uh, 20 and 2, and then the, the Hebrew script for that. You don't see Exodus sure. 20 and 1? Say again? You don't see Exodus 20 and 1? Yes, Exodus 20 and 1. And what you got highlighted is the uh, Wa. Mm -hmm. And what does it say in that box down bottom? Uh, the box down in the bottom. Is it showing on that, on that screen either? I don't see the box down at the bottom, Maury. I, there's a box oh, to the let me, right. Let me there's try this. To the right. Okay, what about now? Okay, now you see the box to the bottom now? Con, con. It says okay. a participle conjunction. Uh, it just disappeared. Okay, that's me trying to get adjusted. Okay. All right, read it for me now, as I can. It says the wa, and it has uh, uh, two um, examples of the nakud. And then it says uh, participle, con uh, particle, conjunction, and. Okay, so told as I came. So what is letting you know that that uh, that the Y itself uh, as a standalone as a letter. Okay, we know it represents. Uh, Sometimes it can represent a U. Some some people may use it for a V or a W, but it's as a consonant. It is a consonant. It's one of the alphabet. But the Y itself is also used as the conjunction and, which joins a thought together. Okay, so it says the particle conjunction, the Y means and. So whenever we're adding this Y in front of a root word, the Y is joining, uh, joining something together or completing a statement. So when you actually go to the Torah and you look at the pages of the Torah when it's written, it is not like the books are today where it says Genesis chapter one, two, three, four. Like they, they put that in as somewhat, but it's just like continual running of text. And so this Y is letting us know that the way in, 
in English, the way that they're saying the laws are done away with, or you don't have to do this anymore, or that anymore. When you actually read the Torah, it's not actually jumping from chapter to chapter, a lot like they have it as if the thought has changed. A lot of times the next chapter can start off with a why, meaning it is still actually connected to the last thought. So this is a conjunction and it's joining a thought together. Okay. So whatever happened before this, it is now stating. So whatever was happening when they came out of Mitzrayim, whenever they came out of Egypt, now it's saying he told them to wash themselves, bring them to the mount. This is now joining to that thought. And now this is something that happened after he told them to do this. It's joining this thought to what he previously already said. So we have here, the Y is, a, uh, is not actually a part of the word, but it looks as if one word. So we have Y is the bear. So the bear, which is this last three. So most Hebrew words have a three letter root word system and they normally have a A vowel class. So at its root level, it is normally a A class vowel system, three letter root word. And from a three letter root word is where you get more understanding. So more words come from the root word. Um, so right here, the root word, if you look to the right now, uh, to the box to the right, which it says, this is H19, speak out, H1696, it says the bar. So I'm gonna go over here for a moment, just to show you. Uh, so you see here is the bar, H, uh, H1696 is the bar. Um, and it generally means to speak. So I'm going between two different lexicons. I'm going through uh, the, the Hebrew uh, Strong's Dictionary, and I'm also using the BDB, uh, a bridge entry. So to see here that in English, this word would translate sometimes as word, sometimes as speak, okay? So when we go back here, back over to the Hebrew side, why the bear? So the vowel points would start switching the uh, the sound or the pronunciation of the words. So it is he spake or he spoke and this wise let you know this is something that's now being a completed action. This is joined to the last thought, but it's also let us know that this is something that he's already done, okay? So we have Waya Deber, Elohim. So again, Elohim. So if everyone would, first of all, um, H in your notes, H1696, is the word speak or it is the word for word and we'll get to that in just a moment so just put for h19 actually i keep saying 19 h1696 uh you can write it in hebrew as it's written here so write your hebrew letters down so you'll be able to recognize this word i'll give you just a moment write down where you can find it at so it's h1696 it's to speak okay so it's to speak, all right? So we have, that's the root word, Waya Deber Elohim. So Elohim, if you look at what it's saying here, so Elohim is just, it's actually in a plural sense. Anytime you add a yod mem to the end of a masculine word, it's making it a plural. So even though we know that there's one mighty one, his might, his majesty, his omnipresence, you know, he is the almighty. So he encompasses all. But when this word is, is referenced, someone outside of the Most High, it is going to be used in a plural sense because the in ending. So um, in one Hebrew dialect, you hear the term Allah. In another Hebrew dialect, you will hear Eloah. Okay. So Allah, Allah is going to be the word for mighty one or power. So if you look over here for a moment, we have here Elohim that is written here. And it says in number, rulers, judges, either as divine representatives at sacred places. Let me go to the strong for you for a moment. So we see here Elohim. And it says plural of 433, which is going to be the singular form, gods in the ordinary sense, but specifically used in the plural, thus especially with the article. Okay, so what you're going to see is so the Elohim which is our mighty one. We know in, in English, they translate as God, but it's actually gonna be mighty one. So we have here Elohim, which is a word you all know, and et, et a eight. If we look down to the bottom of the screen again. Shalom, shalom. If you look down to the bottom of the screen where you have eight, it is a, a particle prep. So this is not a word that actually translates into English, but what this does is it's pointing directly to something. 
So when we go into, and he spake or he said something to them, Shlika, he spake, who spake? So now, why the bear? The yod here is making it a masculine. Why the bear? And he spake, who spake? Elohim or the most high, commonly called God spake. Et, so what did he speak? This et, a eight, is now pointing directly to what he said. So when we're looking at the Hebrew language, the Hebrew language is a very concrete language. It's a directional language. It's a functional language. Whereas in English, we have, con I mean, abstract thought, meaning I might do it, sort of, maybe, kind of. Hebrew is not really that way. When the Most High speaks to us, he's very direct. And the Hebrew language is a very direct language. So it's not, I might keep this commandment of you. Or to consider Sabbath, if he said thou shalt keep Sabbath, the eight here will be what he's pointing to. So now when it says, why did the bear Elohim eight? This eight is pointing directly to, this is what he said. Focus on this because there's no change in this. Call, call is gonna be all, all right? So we have a call, a call, the root word is call, um, call, which is going to be H3605. I'm going to give it to you on this side so it's easy for you to see in English. Corresponding to the Aramaic. Go back to, no, I'll go to the BDB for a moment. Uh, they switch words on me. Okay, so we see here uh, the whole or uh, all. So he spoke all. He spoke all, so for Debarim, uh, Johanna, if you can monitor the, uh, the room for me, that, that way I quit uh, jumping up to the top, uh, trying to let people in. So, uh, so remember H916, 96 is speak, but it's also the same word that means word. So he spake, and when you look down to the bottom, if you look in the box down to the bottom, it says, uh, Debarim, it comes from the root word, the bar, which uh, is word or deed or thing. So also in the Hebrew, what makes it difficult when we're translating or trying to translate is there are some words that have the exact same spelling, the uh, exact same phonetic sound, but now we have to start looking at the application and what's actually being said, which can sometimes make it a little confusing and make it hard to translate when you're trying to understand the text or the context something is written in. So again, we have so again, the hey here is a particle and the hey itself, just as the letter, it, uh, it represents the H as a letter, but as a word, as a prefix to the beginning of our actual word, it means the. So it says he spoke all hadabarim. So this is going to translate in English to the words of these words, okay? So, um... So ha ele again, the, this is the participle. Ele is these, okay? Ele is these, um, which go, referring back to the words here. So in English, I would say he spake these words. Where in Hebrew, you say the words these came after the words. Which sometimes, but also the uh, the way a sentence is constructed in Hebrew, the understanding can still be the same regardless on the placement of the words. Um, it's also going to be, uh, what you're gonna, we're going to look at, it's going to be uh, the, uh, the morphology of the words, the context, syntax. It, there's a whole lot of different things that we'll look at when translating Hebrew, and we get to those things as we get down the line. But right now, I just want us to focus more on the direction of how serious it was when we came out of Mitzrayim. So when you're looking at, when someone is telling us that the laws are done away with, we don't have to keep any commandments. When we've been covering so far in our culture studies, we've been focusing on the feast days this past month. And on the feast days, we were commanded to do something, but these words was given specifically after a feast day, and it was given in the third month after that first feast day that we had in Mitzrayim, which was Pesach. So Pesach or Passover, which represents deliverance and salvation from hard bondage, from your children being murdered and killed, then the Most High said, I'm going to deliver you, I'm going to bring you out. But as we've been coming in Passover and Pesach, you have to purge yourself of all the old ways so that when you come out to him, you can be filled. And so now when he brought them to him, and as we covered in the study last week, he told Moses to prepare the people, have them wash themselves, cleanse themselves. 
So they want to be totally clean when the Most High comes down on the mount to speak with them. And when he came down on the mount, here's what he started doing. He said, why are the bear? And spake, Elohim, et, directly what? Call all, the whole, the total sum, Hadabarim, the words, what words? Ha'ele, these, uh, le, and more. So again, here is another uh, particle preposition, uh, two, in, or four. So the Lamed as an alphabet, it represents L. The letter L is generally what a Lamed translates or as, or as a letter. But if it's a prefix on a word, it could either mean uh, two or four, okay? Two or four. Um, so or in regards to lo, um, an Amar here is to say. Let me click this on the other side. So we have here. Amar, am I going too fast? Are y'all able to uh, write these words out? Am I going a little too fast? You said I'm going too fast? Shlika. Yes, uh, Alicia, yes, ma'am. Shalom. Um, I don't know if this is something that had been covered before mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, the, the uh, cultural study and whatnot, mm -hmm. but in the last, um, I guess you could say word, you mm -hmm. mentioned that the ha um, is the participle. Mm -hmm. Particle, uh -huh. um, so is that like the uh, the wa in the very at the beginning of the verse? Yes. And what does it stand for? Yes. So the wa, the lamed, and the hey, all of these are particles that's added as prefixes to the beginning of a word. So the wa as a letter. Um, would translate as a letter itself as its consonant form would either be uh, what's represented as a W, some pronounce it as a V. When it's in its vowel state, it's going to be a U, generally in a vowel state, or if it has a, a whole, if it's a whole M Y, it would be pronounced as a O, as a vowel, but generally it's used as a U. So that's that letter, and this one means and down to the bottom. Okay, so this, this is one that when it's placed on the beginning of a word, it means and. The hay, you know, um, the hay represents an H, okay? Sometimes if it's going to be utilized in a place of a vowel, like at the end of a word, it could take on like the A sound or somewhat of an A vowel. But generally the hay represents, uh, it's a letter H um, in translation. It's the letter H. But when you're actually now putting it in the beginning of a word, if it's not a part of the word. So sometimes these letters can actually be a part of a word, which the whole function is different. But when they add it to a root word, it is now adding the word V. So like I said, um, uh, if we would say uh, the words, uh, the words in English, we would say V, which is T-H-E, words, W-O-R-D-S. But in Hebrew, it appears as one word, hadabarim, hadabarim. And we pronounce it sort of as one word, but the thought is the words, okay? The words. And we have ha'ele. So ha'ele, uh, this is, again is the root word, which are it's going to be these. Okay, ha'ele is a pronoun which is going to be these, and the root and this here the lamed uh, is going to be one that uh, is going to be two, four, and sometimes it can translate as with. Okay, so in previous lessons, and we will be going back to some some of the reviews at some point, but uh, so only what I really want us to focus on today is the reason why when we're trying to translate that you may hear it where we sound like we're calling words or we get stuck or we're trying to figure out what something actually means in Hebrew. It is because our English thought process, we think from a different thought process. We think from multiple words. We don't think that I have to go in to find the root word, the definition of the root word to understand what this uh, particle that's been added to the front, what does it do to the word? What does it morph into? So we're not going to, I'm not really focusing on that portion of today, but right now I'm just trying to show that the reason why when we're reading it, when you hear some of us, when we're trying to figure out what we're reading, we're trying to identify the root word. We're trying to identify prefixes and suffixes that are added to a word that makes a word look like one word that could be actually two or three words. Okay. So again, so the hay, so if you will write this one now, uh, uh, Koti and everyone, so the hay represents the the wah is a conjunction and it's the word for an. The lamed is two, four. 
Did I answer your question, my sister? Are you uh, on, on board with us right now? Toda, absolutely. Um, okay. I was just, you You started in the beginning and um, again, you, you touched on the, how we separate it in the English language. So I was, I was wondering how it was a connector when it wasn't separated, but yes, Toda, you answered the question. Okay, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, Zakane, if you'll help me out, um, since we didn't have volunteers today, Zakane, if you can read for me verse two. Hi, Maury. <clears throat> Anoki Yahuwah Eleheka Asher Hotsatika. Okay, so going back to here, Anoki. Anoki, when you look down to the bottom box, oh, it's a pronoun. Um, in a singular, and you, the uh, the root to it generally is ani. So if uh, ani generally is going to be myself, I'm saying ani samak tazawa. So I'm saying I am samak tazawa. Ani samak. I am samak. When the Most High speaks of Himself, um, you see Him use anoki, anoki, which is Him saying I am or I'm Yahua, Yahua, Yahawa. And I'm going to speak about these different dialects in just a moment. Because I know sometimes people have a question as to why we pronounce it that differently. So Anoki, again, is, uh, is a pronoun, and it is uh, uh, a first person singular, and it is uh, translated as I. Then we have here uh, the Most High's name, uh, yod Hey wah -Hey. Now, what you can look at is over here is, it's going to tell you is the Y-H-W-H. Uh, which are the letters in English that it represents. But let me go to uh, the Strong for a moment. I want to show you something. So you know how a lot of people have the name debate. So the Most High said his children were going to return to his name. They're going to start calling upon his name. So when he brought them out of Egypt, the whole point is, so now it says, remember in verse one, it says, and the Most High spake all these words saying, this is after he just brought them from Egypt, brought them from false gods, told them to keep Passover, told them to unleaven themselves or to clean everything out, leave all that stuff behind, told them to wash themselves, prepare yourselves, tell the people to be ready because I'm going to come to them. Now he's come to them at the top of the mount and he spake all these words and it's very direct. He spake all these words saying, saying what? So it's letting you know the focal point is now the most high for the first time is now speaking to Israel after they've come out of Egypt, out of captivity. And he said to them what? I know he, I am. And he establishes his name here again, Yahuwah. So why is he letting them know this? Because what do we know about Egypt? Egypt culturally, customarily had what? Many false gods. They worship everything, snakes, cows, whatever, you name it. They was worshiping everything. So what the Most High is trying to let us know is you're not supposed to worship everything. You're not supposed to worship multiple things. You're only supposed to worship me. So whatever names you heard in Egypt, whatever customs you had in Egypt, you're to lose all of this because I've delivered you. I've told you to cleanse yourself and now I'm about to refill you with the truth. And as Yamane said last night about Josiah, that's where a lot of us are at at this time. There's a lot of things that we learned along the way from being raised. And again, I'm not saying this in an offensive manner, but rather being taught in the church, rather in the world from parents, friends, whatever. We've heard things the wrong way, not according to what's actually written in the text. So he let them know, I am Yahuwah, Yahoa, Yahoa, and I'm going to speak on that in just a moment, but let me finish this thought. So remember what I was saying about uh, the singular form. So we see here um, the uh, singular form as well as the plural form, which is the word for mighty one or for God. So we have Elah, uh, Allah, Elah, Eloah. The holem here is where we get Eloah if you use the vowel points. If you don't use the vowel points, you want, you're going to go from uh, some of the preferred as a lot of Hebrews that don't like using the Masoretic vowel points, then they would say Aleph Lamed Hey, which is Allah, Allah, Eloah, or Allah. So we have Eloheka, Eloheka. So the question that uh, Coach Alicia just asked about those prefixes that we was going into, we now also have suffix. Okay, so this cough on the, this cough on the end is actually going to make it uh personal. Okay, this is making it your, you know, Anoki Yahu Eloheka. So I'm your God. So regardless of who somebody told you your God was, that is a lie. I am your God. 
Anoki, I am Yahuwah Eloheka, your God, the one that just freed you, the one that just saved your children's lives, the one that kept y'all from getting whipped and beat, the one that kept you from getting shot down in the streets. I'm the one that did this for you is what he's trying to let everyone understand. Asher, which, which or who, which that or who is what this can translate into. Um, Asher, Hotsatika. So here again, you can see, let me go to the strong for you on this one to make it easier. <laughs> so for that very long word, <laughs> y'all look at the uh, highlighted, uh, highlighted word that I have there uh, in the gray, right? Y'all see how many letters is in that? But how many, how many letters is the root word? Three letters. So a word is very hard to translate. And this is a word that gives a lot of us a hard way to go because in Hebrew, another reason why we struggle with trying to understand what's written is because sometimes the root word cannot even be identified easily. We say hotsatika, right? Because that's what it says. This form right here is hotsatika, all these letters together. <laughs> but it's the root word, yatsa. So in hotsatika, the root word is yatsa, okay? So, um, so he's the one who actually said, I'm the one who brought you Zakan, can you get the rest of it for me real quick? I know who brought you. Ma'aret, ma ma uh, Mitraim, Ma'bet, Abedin. Okay. So he said, I am Yah, your God, your power, which brought you, again, that cough on the end, I'm the one who brought you. Here's another... Uh, uh, prefix for y'all to remember. So the letter mem, the letter mem in Hebrew represents a M in transliteration or when you bring it over. So it transliterates as a mem. A, the mem sliga is the letter M. It represents the letter M. But as a, a prefix to a word, it can be from or out of. Generally, it's going to be from. So he's saying, I brought you from, from what? Aretz. Aretz. Is going to be the land, the territory, the country of. So Aretz is normally one that we will use as land or earth. So I brought you from the land of Aretz, Aretz, Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is Egypt. So you see here how the highlight is totally bluish or gray here. That's because this mem here is a part of this word. When I go back here, watch how it stops. It stops, it's breaking it down. So if I go here, it's letting you know, this is a standalone word. When I come forward, it's, it's showing you the breakdown. So even though this appears to be one word, when we read it, we read it as one word, but it's showing you here that it's this particle here is from from the territory of the land. Now this mem here, which is exactly the same as this letter here, is a part of the word. So that's another reason why when we're trying to translate, that you know we get caught up because we're trying to be able to identify root words. And when some of these letters that can represent um, a word itself or uh, just a letter of a word, this is why sometimes translation can be hard. So Mitzrayim, me bait, me bait. So again, this mem is a prep from out of. So he said, I brought you uh, from the land of Egypt. Again, mem from me bait. From so bait abayit is going to be house. I brought you from the house abadin abadin. So abad in the singular is going to be uh serve servant. They use the term slave. So we have in in the room right now we have abadal. So abadal saying he's a servant of Elohim. So also when we have Hebrew names, the Hebrew names have meaning. So Abadal chose the name Abadal as he's a servant of Elohim. He's a servant of Yah. So whether he says Abad Yah, uh, Abadal, Abad El, you know, it's, uh, he's a servant of Elohim. So we have to be very specific with who we serve. And one thing, as a, another reason why we return it to the language, and some people may say, well, why are we wasting time doing this to some of these This is not important. It's very important. Because when you go to the history of our people, the main things that would always happen when we went into captivity was what? People would take away the name of Yah and they would take away our names because what was in our names a lot of times? Yeah. Yah or El. Elohim or Yah was in our names. 
So they would take our identities and they would wipe us so that we wouldn't remember and they would refill us. So where did they get this type process from? What did y'all tell us to do when we came from Egypt? Forget all that. So I can re-educate you. I can reteach you with what I want you to have. I don't want you to come over here with these Egyptian customs, these Egyptian mannerisms, these Egyptian names. I don't want you calling me that stuff. I want you to forget all that. The same way when your captors took you into captivity, they wanted you to forget what? My name. They wanted you to forget your name. They wanted you to forget who you were. They wanted you to forget your God, your mighty one, and your power. So a language is key to who you are also. Because what they would do is they would make, uh, when you read the book of Daniel, when you go into the book of Daniel, what you will see is that the first thing Nebuchadnezzar did to the Hebrews, and not only the Hebrews, anyone that came into their captivity, change their names. Change their names. You're no longer going to be called Hananiah. You're no longer going to be called Azariah or Azariahu. What is Azar in Hebrew? Someone help me out. Azar. Someone help me out. What is Azar in Hebrew? Help. Help. What is Yah in Hebrew? The name of the Most High. So if someone has the name Azar Yah, they're saying, who is their help? Yah is my help. But if you can't all me belt, Azar, what just happened? You're no longer going to be called Azar Yah. You're going to be called belt, Azar. Because we're in Babylon. We have Babylonian names. We have Babylonian gods. So I'm going to put my God's name in your name and take your God's name out of your name. Mind wash, brainwash. And so that's why it's important. So when people want to know why are we trying to return to these customs, because historically, just in history, we need to understand what happens when nations take other nations over. You have to learn their traditions. You have to learn their customs. So we live in the land of what right now today? Hmm? Where we live at? Somebody said Egypt. I heard Egypt back there. Modern day Egypt, right? <laughs> but we live in America, right? What, what season are we in right now in America? I'm not talking about the weather. What season are we in right now in America if you have a job? If you have any sort of income, what you need to be considering around this time? Tax season. <laughs> huh? And America says you better do what? Pay your taxes. You may hide from them for a minute. You may not do it for a minute. But when they catch up to you, you might lose your house. You're going to lose your... They would deduct your bank account, whatever. You better pay them taxes because you're in America. They give you those laws. America says now what's in the law of America right now today? That a man could and a woman can. But what the most high's law say? But what does America's law say? So Satan's laws always go contrary to the laws of the most high. And we who are being awakened, we should not judge people for where they are. We have to understand that the adversary has done what? Erased our culture, our custom, our heritage, and our God, and have told us that all these ways that America, that Egypt, that Babylon says is okay, is what? Is okay. They, no, no, Amer they say it's okay. But then the most high, when he reveals it to us, and not for us to say, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, or you wicked, you should be doing what? Doing a self-examination. Am I in alignment with the word of my God who has brought me out that has freed me, who has delivered me? Did he deliver me for me to remain in sin? Or he delivered me so that I can what? Worship him. What do y'all think the answer today is? He delivered us to worship him. What was the whole reason he said, I'm calling y'all out of Egypt? To come worship me. And you can't worship me with those old customs. So the same way they wanted you to lose me, what the most I want us to do? Lose them. Lose their ways, return to him. So um, what time are we at? Because I know we started just a little bit behind. So uh, so he's what he's saying in these commandments alone. If we just read the commandments, as Ima Shoshana was bringing out last night about how some people wasn't really serving the most high with their heart, right? With our heart, are we really considering the most high? Are we really understanding what he's saying to us? He's saying, I freed you. I delivered you. I love you. Come on, worship me alone. Come give me the credit. Let's do me. I'm the one did all this for you. Why are you still referencing someone or something else that I'm telling you I hate? Give it up. And all you have to do is repent and you can come on back to me. 
that's all just in the commandments within itself. Like he's let you know, he starts off with letting you know, I'm your God, I freed you. And now let me tell you your name. So I normally don't go into false names, but you know, there's one that's called Dagon. Dagon is what? Fish God. There's Asterisk. Asterisk is what? Goddess of fertility. So we have Easter, Esther. See, we got to know something about language too. So Easter or Esther comes from what? The goddess of fertility. So when we're supposed to be getting ready for Pesach or Passover, and that word is, I can't say, explain what Passover means. Passover literally means that what? I'm going to look over. Man, you done got big. What's going on? What's going on? You done got big, eh? He said, I'm going to pass over you. I'm going to pass over you. What you did when you was in Egypt, as long as you've heard my call that I told you I'm going to deliver you, I'm going to free you, but you have some things you have to do to prepare in order to have your salvation. If you do those things, I'm going to do what? Pass over all y'all been doing when y'all been in this land. I'm not going to think about it no more. But when I bring you out, please, by all means, leave that there. That's why we got a Feast of Eleven Bread. So leave that, and I'm going to bring you to me. So the most times basically trying to let us know, I did all this for you. And so with our whole hearts, are we thankful? And I want to tell y'all, I'm ashamed to tell y'all, sometimes we're really not thankful with our hearts. We're thankful with our mouths. And his word even said that people worship him with their mouth, but their hearts are what? Far from them. I'm going to tell y'all, I've been a child before, and I'm not someone's child. There's times when I was real happy about what my parents did for me, and I still didn't always do my chores. There's time my parents are the ones who did something for me, and I would listen to someone else's words over my parents' words. When we would jump down, it says, honor your what? Your father and your mother, that your days may be long. So if your father and mother tell you, don't do this, and this is not good for you, and somebody else say, oh, your mom not being too strict, what did, they just what did they just tell you? Huh? They just told you that what your parents are saying is not necessary. And so then when they say your parents are too strict, when you over my house, you can do this. What did they just tell you to do? The very thing that the commandment tells us not to do, it tells us to do what? Honor our father and mother. What did they just teach you to do? Dishonor your father and mother. So where am I going with this point in this portion today before I get ready to yield? I myself have to uh, repent for my shames as a child of Yah, the same as anybody else. So regardless of where we fit on the spectrum of the word, his commandments, and how we live in our life, we all have some sin that we need to work on that we need to purge. So it's not for me to be looking at somebody else and their shortcomings. It's for me to say, hey, you know, that's wrong. The same way I know this is wrong. I need to work on this. You need to work on that. And we need to encourage one another and encourage one another to love and do what y'all says, because if we're not doing what his word says, we're not giving no respect. And in my house, children, I ain't gonna put you all the way on front street, but you know, as of late, I've been talking about like I see and I hear almost everything. I don't always speak on it until I get really irritated because I'm like, by now they should have done this. The most I said man was created in his what? In his image after his likeness. So as a parent, as a parent, and I'm saying this to the other adults now, as a parent, when your child has done something that made you upset because they did not do what you said do, before looking at your child, look at yourself, because that's how y'all feels with us. And so that's the shame that I'm talking about that we should all understand that at some point, there's something in this word that the most I say we should do that we do not. There's something that the most I say we should not do that we do. So with that understanding, Mr. Bakar, let us continue to purge ourselves as we come up on the feast. I only went over a couple of verses just to show y'all a little bit of Hebrew language because we started a little late um, today. But it's of utmost importance that we keep the commandments of the Most High because he brought us out. Oh, the, the other thing I want to do real quick uh, because I said I was going to do so. So I know some of you uh, want to know why sometimes you hear different pronunciations of the Most High's name. So if you see here and actually throughout the text, and here's one of the reasons why some of us do not actually lean more so to the vowel points, but however, because most people use the vowel points, we, we teach them and we utilize them. So you see here how, how the name is vowel pointed here. We have yod hey wah -he. we have a Shiwa here, we have a, 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 a Kometz here, right? 
So now if I go to the uh, to the coordinates, you see how I pointed differently here? We still have the Shiwa, we still have uh, the uh, Clements, but we also have a Holum. So when you want to know how some people are saying um, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahoah, it's based upon whether they're using vowel points or not. And if they are using vowel points, which vowel points are they utilizing? And so that's another reason why you don't hear me be a stickler to the way someone pronounces the name. Uh, but I do understand that as long as they're trying to pronounce Yod, Hey, Wah, Hey, they're acknowledging this is the name that the Most High gave unto us. And just like, for example, let me do this real quick. Let me stop the screen share because that's going to be all on that. Give me one moment. Uh, give me one moment. My children stay out of this. <laughs> All right, give me one moment. Can y'all see uh, the name on the screen? All right, Maury. All right, uh, with a couple of hands, I want someone to pronounce for me this name on the screen. Both, both of the names on the screen. What we got? Who said that? You said what? Shawale. So we have a Shawale. Anybody else? Yeah, pronounce the other one also. A landy what? A landius. So she signed the words out by there. So she said a landius for this one. What we have online? I seen somebody hand up. What do we have? Whoever raised their hand online, the floor is yours. No, hand, no hands yet, Maury. Okay, I thought I seen one. Okay, Shaquan. Uh, Coach Shaquan, what do you have here? What? I was going to say Chawel um, Alantheus. You say Chawel Alantheus, okay. Second participant online before I come back to in the room. Bro G, I see your hand. Um, Shalom. Uh, Shilawe Alantheus. You say what now? She. Shiwale Alandius. Shiwale Alandius, right? Anybody else? Like that. Okay, you, you say something like that. The brother says something like that. <laughs> Shiwale Alandius, okay. Anybody else in the room want to pronounce his name? Anybody else before we get ready to close this portion? All right, so we heard of Shiwale Alandius. Uh, what did you say, uh, Shakira? Okay, so she said Chihuahua also. So we have a couple of Chihuahuas. Uh, so, um, so I'm gonna tell you some of the pronunciations that I've heard throughout life. <laughs> Chihuahua, 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 Swahili. I mean, I mean, it, I, it's just been butchered. But in this room, <laughs> in this room, I know if anybody say Chihuahua, 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 See well, Swahili, Chihuahua Wale, as they used to tease me in school. Chihuahua Wale, you know, if, if I hear any of those versions, I'm not going to think they're talking about Kanakya. I'm still going to do what? I'm going to answer. If they say Abadal or Gilberto, which is another one we need to discuss because it looks like Gilberto, but it's what? Hilberto. So Gilberto. My beloved brother that I still call Gilberto, I know his name is Gilberto, but I've been calling him Gilberto for so long that all his Meshpachat calls him Gilberto, he does what? He answers, why? I know y'all trying to call me and you mean, well, you're not doing it to be funny. Y'all speak English. I speak Spanish. In Spanish, that G is going to be pronounced as Il. And y'all saying Gilberto, so I understand your mindset, but I know you're calling on me and I know you love me and you're my brother. The same way the Most High knows that we're trying to call upon his name and we may have what? Slightly different pronunciations. So that's why you don't really hear me get into the name debate like some do. You got to pronounce it exactly like me. Cause I'm going to tell y'all, I pronounce my name Chihuahua now. But Ima said, but it's Chihuahua, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not Chihuahua. <laughs> but in all actuality, just to be 100% honest with you, in school, I went with Shawali. 
That's what everybody call me, Shawaley. But then you have people like Shakira in the back want to know how you get an SH sound out of a CH. Then I had to ask myself that question. I just kind of preferred that pronunciation myself until I grew older and understood that my name comes from Africa. And in Africa, that CH is going to be ch. And the CHI, I ain't going to go all the way into that, but I did a little bit of research on my name. It got a little power behind that CHI that's in a name. So when I started researching, then I started understanding that when I heard African people call me by name, I said, they probably said it right. <laughs> <laughs> so they would either call me Chawali or Joeli. So then I, as an adult, stopped calling myself Chawali with our English phonetic dialect, and I call myself Chawali. But the point is, even I myself don't even really know what's really the true pronunciation of my name. But I use the wisdom of the people of the land in which I come from, uh, where, the, where it comes from, and I said, this is how they say it. I'm pretty sure they know a whole lot more Chihuahua or Chihuahua in the land, right? Huh? You, you said Quayle. <laughs> oh, the, the, the second name, they said it right, Alandis. Yep, so they actually pronounced the second one right, Alandis. So um, I'm way over time now, but I just want to show that because also um, there's some of us that get a little too puffed up when we come to the walk. The most High is not bringing us to this knowledge to be puffed up and to look down on anyone else about where they are, what Hebrew dialect they speak, where they are in their transformation or their conversion in Yah. We're supposed to be a light. So with that, I pray and hope that everyone got some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. There are different Hebrew dialects. That's another reason why I want to show my name that way. Um, but don't y'all go use my name because that's, you know, I still love that name because that's what my parents gave me. Hallelujah. But I, I, I'm now recognized as a... Uh, uh, as uh, Samak Tazawa, which is support rock, or Samakya Tazawa, you know, um, so uh, that's what I prefer to go by in my Ibrit family. I prefer Samak because I've grown to become Samak Tazawa. However, that is my name uh, uh, that I was given at birth, all right? So I just want to show that as an example that y'all know I always use, use the term, use cognizance for the nonsense. So if our names are sometimes mispronounced and we're not getting all upset and been out of shape about it, that I understand that Earth the Dean <laughs> and Chawali, we both gonna know who we can call him, and we're gonna know that the hardest two names in the room, we're gonna know who y'all trying to talk to, right? Yeah. So the most high also, what he wants us to understand more so than pronouncing his name, because I know some people have made his name a religion. We don't need to make the name of Yah a religion, okay? What Yah wants us to understand is who he is what his word is and what he requires of us and that we should reference him as our father and our Elohim or our God and do all that he commands us to do because he's the one who freed us and brought us out. With that, I give all praise, honor, esteem to the most high and I yield the floor to Zakan Yaquab. I hope that has been well edified. Selah. <laughs>